Hi, my name is Chef Ashley Dominique, also known as Chef Ash. I'm a personal private chef from Slido, Louisiana, 30 minutes outside of New Orleans. Um, currently, I'm the personal chef for Nikhil Alexander Walker, number six for the New Orleans Pelicans. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to prepare. Um, the first thing is gonna be a jumbo lump crab cake topped with a homemade romalade sauce. Then we're gonna get into barbecue shrimp and grits, and then we're gonna finish the meal off with the uh, bananas foster served over fresh vanilla bean ice cream. Let's get this started. Today we're gonna to create a Creole lump crab cake topped with a homemade romalade sauce. First, I'm gonna start off with one pound of lump crab meat. I'm gonna to add to that a half a cup of green bell peppers, half a cup of red bell pepper, a fourth of a cup of celery, diced celery, a little green onion, fresh parsley, then you're gonna add a half a cup of regular onion. I have two tablespoons of mayo, two tablespoons of Creole mustard, Oop, add a little bit too much. I have onion powder, garlic powder, Italian seasoning, um, Tony Satchery's, and a little of cayenne pepper. I want to put a few pinches of salt. I rarely measure my seasonings. I just keep seasoning until my ancestors told me to stop. So you can definitely season everything to your liking. Once you get this mixed pretty well, try not to shred your crab meat. You're going to add your two eggs. You're going to mix that as well. Then you're going to add a half a cup of panko. If you don't have panko, you can use Italian breadcrumbs as well. Sometimes I use that, I just use what I have on hand. And I'm gonna grab a little bit more breadcrumb. And I'm gonna add until it's not so liquidy. So I'm gonna add about another fourth of a cup to a half a cup of breadcrumbs. I don't like to add too much breadcrumbs because I like it to mostly be crab, it's a crab cake. After you get this all mixed up, and we're gonna put it in the fridge for 30 minutes, and let it set while we're preparing the romalade sauce. Now I'm gonna start on the romalade sauce. I'm gonna take one and one fourth cup of mayo. You can use any brand mayo you want. In the South, we love using blue plate mayonnaise. You're then gonna add a fourth of a cup Creole mustard. I'm gonna add Fresh green onion, you can use that to taste. Fresh parsley. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of dill relish, two teaspoons of prepared horseradish, and you can actually add that to taste as well because it can get a little spicy. I'm gonna add one and a half tablespoons of Tabasco. I'm gonna juice a half a lemon to brighten up the sauce. Then I'm gonna add a little fresh black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and sweet paprika. I don't wanna to add too much black pepper due to the other sauce, the hot sauce, and the horseradish that I have in here. So you're gonna mix, mix, mix. Then you're gonna taste. This is when you're gonna add more seasonings. Season it to taste how you like. I'm gonna add a little bit more lemon juice, a few pinches of salt, and a little bit more Tony's. I'm gonna wrap this up. You're gonna mix this. Then you're gonna add whatever more seasonings that you would like to elevate your sauce. I'm gonna cover it, plastic wrap, sit it in the fridge while I cook the, cook the crab cakes. Now that I have the um, room live in the fridge, I pulled out the crab meat mix. And now we're gonna, I'm going to form the cakes. You wanna take about a half a cup for each and just kind of make them like this. These are usually the size that you want. You're gonna always make them smaller for like a dinner party, like pass around hors d'oeuvre, or you can make these a little bigger for an entree size as well. 
I love crab meat. I love seafood actually. Now being in Louisiana, we have access to some of the dopest seafood. I love seafood. These crab cakes, uh, they actually mean a lot. I actually was featured in Sports Illustrated preparing for preparing this same crab cake for Sean Payton back in 2020. Um, I was a personal chef for Jadavion Clowney during his 2020-2021 football season. He actually, he took me with him for the season. It was one point he was trying to figure out what team he wanted to go to. The Titans and the Saints were very interested in him. And so essentially, uh, Sean Payton flew out to speak with him and JD, offered for his chef to prepare the meal instead of them taking him out to a restaurant and the rest was history like I was it, it essentially changed my life a lot of people found out about me who didn't know about me um, I was featured in over 25 different articles across the United States and I've had like a lot of men book with me just because I fed Sean Payton so shout out to Sean Payton for that one and JD because if he didn't offer that they wouldn't have never, you know, never known about me. I wouldn't have never gotten a chance to meet them. So that was pretty cool. So now that I have my crab cakes set, I'm going to add them to the pan. Crab cakes on each side between three to five minutes. It depends on how crispy you want them and the texture that you're looking for on the outside. So the longer that you cook them, the crispier they'll be. I'm Ashley Crawford. I'm a personal private chef. I'm from Slido, Louisiana. I'm 34 years old. I've been in the industry since I was 14 years old. Um, I basically got out of trouble when I was 14. Uh, when I came home from juvie, my mom asked me to come work with her until I went back to school. And so while working for her at a local catering company in Slido, I fell in love with food. Like I literally fell in love with the whole concept, everything from the front of the house to the back of the house. So uh, from the age of 14 to 17, I was strictly working at the same catering company that she was. And that led to, I've always kept a job in the culinary industry, even if I had another job. And then in um, 2016, I decided to just quit my job at the time. Pay sucked and I just wanted to, I wanted to make myself rich, not anyone else. So that's what led me into essentially working for myself. So once you get a good color on both sides of the crab cakes, you wanna take them out. Now that I've seared off the crab cakes, I'm gonna plate now. I like to dress my plate with a little bed of spring mix. To top that with the crab cake. Now you top with the rumelade sauce. And I always like to serve the crab cake with wedges of fresh lemon. They don't want to go on the plate. All right. And I'm going to also top it with some fresh green onion sprigs. Yeah, there you have the Creole crab cake. Next, we're gonna make barbecue shrimp and grits. You're gonna, when preparing your grits, always follow the back of the, the pack of grits. I like to always add an extra half a cup of water just so they can be real creamy and not lumpy. So we're gonna add the water. When your water comes to a boil, you're gonna add your grits, but always whisk with a wire whisk when doing your grits, just so they can be as creamy and less lumpy as possible. You're gonna let the grits cook. You're gonna let those cook off while you're preparing your barbecue shrimp sauce. Now I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of butter to, your, to the pan. Oh, that's a little bit more, but that's fine. I'm gonna add the half a cup of onion. Half a cup of red bell pepper. A little green bell pepper. 
And I'm gonna saute this down to the onion get translucent. While this is cooking down, I do like to always add my dry seasoning. So I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of onion powder, two tablespoons of garlic powder, a little sweet paprika, and a little pinch of toners. While this is cooking down, I'm gonna add a little bit more water to my grits. And I also like to add a little cream cheese to my grits. That makes them a little special, a little bit different, and it holds up well with the sauce. Like that. A little butter to the grits. We have our grits ready. Now it's time to finish off our barbecue shrimp. The veggies are almost done. I'm gonna add fresh parsley green onion, stirring your veggies so they don't stick to the bottom of the pan. This is one of my like popular menu items from my brunch list with my clients. Okay, so once that all cooks down, you're gonna add about three to four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna add about four more tablespoons of butter. I prefer to use unsalted butter with this just because of all of the other seasonings that we have in the sauce. Next, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. And let that butter cook down and melt. Also add some fresh lemon juice to that. Now that the sauce and the seasonings have cooked down a little bit more, I'm gonna add my barbecue shrimp seasoning. And this is a little cheat on this recipe for you guys. There's a brand called Old River Road, I think. And they make an awesome barbecue shrimp seasoning that I love to use when I'm on a time crunch and I don't have the time to blend my own. So now that you have your sauce all together, I'm gonna take some beautiful colossal, well, jumbo, Louisiana gall shrimp. And I'm also gonna cut a little fresh lemon to throw in the sauce to brighten it up some as well. Turn your pan up a little bit. And now let the shrimp get yummy in the sauce. In Louisiana, people normally fix the traditional shrimp and grits, and you know, that's all they offer when it comes to that. So I wanted to do something a little different. So I created the barbecue shrimp and grits, and it's definitely been a hit with clients. You do not want to overcook your shrimp. So soon as your shrimps get a nice pink color, and it's gonna actually be a little darker than pink due to the sauce. Add the rest of the parsley. It's the green onion. A little bit of fresh garlic as well to bring the sauce and the dish all together. While that is cooking, check on your grits. Make sure they're thick but not grainy. You want them to be creamy but not watery. So this is a great consistency for your for any shrimp and grit actually, not just the barbecue shrimp. These shrimp come straight from the Gulf of Mexico. I have a great friend, I call him my shrimp dealer. He provides me with all of my fresh shrimp for my clients, so shout out to Mr. Shrimp. Now we're gonna tie this meal up, finish it up, and I'm gonna show you guys how I plate it. Sauce is finished coming together. I'm gonna check back on the grits, let this finish up for the next three to five minutes, and I'll show you guys how I like the plate. Now I'm gonna plate my barbecue shrimp and grits. We want to start with a nice healthy portion of the creamy grits at the bottom of your bowl. Okay. And next, the barbecue shrimp sauce. I like to get a lot of the good chunky bits at the bottom of all the veggies. 
and put that down on top first. And I like to go in. On top. Sure. I've already decorated the plate, garnished the plate with some pink peppercorns and fresh parsley and I'm going to top with fresh green onion. And there you have my Creole barbecue shrimp and grits. Now it's time to finish off our dinner with the bananas foster for dessert. First I'm going to start off with one stick of butter. Put it in a hot pan. Just want to make sure all of your butter is melted. I'm going to add a half a cup of brown sugar. Whisk that to get it all incorporated. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of fresh cinnamon, fresh ground cinnamon. Next, one tablespoon of vanilla. Next, you're gonna slice both of your bananas. You can either slice your banana lengthwise or you can slice them diagonally. It's completely up to you how you want to present it. I'm gonna actually slice mine diagonal since we have a couple of blue spots. I'm gonna add those bananas to the pan. Let them get all yummy in the sauce. Coat your bananas in the sauce. Bananas sauce is definitely a traditional dessert from Louisiana. Um, it's served all over different restaurants there. And it's pretty, it's pretty, it's simple, but it's complex. So it doesn't take a lot to make, but it tastes like you took all day to make the sauce. Next, I'm gonna top it have three ounces of banana liqueur and two ounces of rum. You can either use light or dark rum. And then next, we're gonna just keep tossing your bananas in there so they're all yummy like this in the sauce. And I'm gonna to continue to toss the bananas into the sauce. The sauce has gotten thicker. Some of the alcohol has cooked off. I, I personally don't like to cook out all of the alcohol off. I like to leave a little bit something there. Now I'm gonna show you how to plate your banana sauce. I'm gonna take some scoop of vanilla ice cream. And I like to layer the banana sauce in glasses so that you can get a little bit of everything with each scoop. A little banana sauce. Then you're just gonna alternate that until your glasses fill to the Yeah, We make mistakes in the kitchen, but hey, it's about how you recover from, from them. Do one more layer. And here we have banana swaster. Thank you guys for tuning in with me today. It's been an awesome vibe. If you would like to get to know more about me, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at A Taste of Chef Ash. Visit my website, atasteofchefash.com, and be sure to tune in to next time where I show you guys how to create authentic New Orleans seafood gumbo. Mm -hmm.